Hey guys, it's Faye from FaceWorld Media. Did you know that Zoom recently released their new whiteboard features? So long story short, you'll be able to create whiteboards and share with your colleagues and being able to uh, edit them and contribute on multiple devices, including not just your desktop, laptop, but also tablets and also mobile devices. That sounds well and good. So I'm just going to go in and explore for the first time. First, you're required to sign into your Zoom account. Once you're in, you notice on the left hand side, there's something called whiteboards and there's a label says new right next to it. Now you have all whiteboards, your whiteboards and those that are shared with you, uh, starred and also trashed. So I'm going to start with a new one because I've not done this before. Right off the bat, I can see that there are pointers and their uh, shapes, lines, texts, and also there are labels right next to them. So I think it helps. Uh, quite a bit there too. And it looks like you're able to, you can share board comments and more all on Zoom whiteboard. Okay, looks like I'm able to move this uh, around as needed. So here, so select and I can draw. Looks like I'm gonna rename this face first try. I can also see how this could be helpful for an iPad, for instance. I think some of these features will be easier if you have, let's say an iPad and a stylus like this. Beyond that, these are the shapes. And what's interesting is as I'm selecting this, so I have to first paint the shape and then I can resize them as needed. And here are the text and I can change the text size. I can change the color of the text. There are just um, some colors to choose from. You can bring different elements forward, backward, the sticky note, I think this is a good idea for people to kind of uh, leave messages. So already has your name attached to it. So that's pretty cool. And once you leave the message again, there's your name and I can also resize it if needed. I don't know why this resize isn't working, but uh, I have different sticky notes here. Looks like resize is not working like that, but I can only make it bigger, but not smaller than this dimension right here. I can use command plus or and minus to basically make the board bigger, smaller. And one thing you, you notice is that, you know, you can make it much smaller and then you can select and move the elements around and you can continue to create ideas. I think that's what Zoom means by the infinite possibilities. So uh, again, I can just, you know, keep creating here. I think this is Zoom all the way out is about 10%. So, all right, so that makes sense. Here are some erasers. Here I can introduce an image if I want to. I can make it bigger. I can also apply different pages. Looks like you can create up to 12 pages. All I have to do is add one more. And if I need to navigate back to the first page, and all I have to do is click on pages right here. So there's a bit of a preview of what I have already created. And here are some comments, give feedback version history. Let's see, there are version history being tracked. I think that's important. Uh, export, I have the functionality of PDF or PNG. Uh, help center, leave feedback, lock the board. So this way, locking a board removes viewing access for everyone but the owners. Uh, a board owner must unlock the board to reverse this action. So locking just means, I guess, the creator can see it, but not everybody else. Here is the sharing functionality. Uh, I can add contact or email here, and I have these options, co-owner, editor, commenter, viewer. Here you could copy the link, only invited user with the link can see it, but you can also change it to uh, everybody at Phase World Media. I think some of these options are gonna be pretty sufficient for what we're trying to do. I went back to Zoom's landing page. They didn't really go into explaining different roles, um, I would say that co-owner most likely will have the same rights as you as the original creator. The editor can make changes, but can't just create a new whiteboard or, you know, trying to delete it and things like that. Commenter again, is just adding comments, but they cannot make changes to these elements. Yeah, I would say this is actually pretty cool. You may be wondering what are some of the scenarios where this becomes a good idea? I would say remote teams will most likely find this helpful. I come from a consulting and marketing background, so 
I think Zoom Whiteboard is going to be pretty interesting for activities that involves basically brainstorming. Imagine whether you have a black or a whiteboard in the office and it's shared by the team members who are sitting there together. Now you don't have the opportunity to have everyone simply walk up to the whiteboard, put a sticky note there or talk about or share an image. Uh, this way, you know, you can share this board with eight, 10 different people and you can talk and start dropping things on the whiteboard. Once again, that requires a good facilitator above all. Uh, the last thing I will say is it's not always about the technology. Zoom Whiteboard is going to be great, but you do need a project manager and facilitator or creative director who can actually drive the conversation forward. But you know what? Worst case scenario, just start exploring and make sure that you seek feedback from people once you're done with the brainstorming sessions, because this way people will base their experiences and show you better ways to collaborate in the future. So much love from Face World Media and thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider sharing this video with one colleague and a friend and that goes a long way of supporting our work. I also included a link to a special resource I developed for Zoom hosts, co-hosts and moderators, and it's called the Ultimate Guide to Zoom 2022. Please check it out. I would love to get your feedback. Until next time. Bye.